This is KP. Um, I met Hong Kong Maps last year when I was in um, Hong Kong. Um, and from last year to this year that I have seen that things have ch changed drastically in terms of the protest and the uh, direction that Hong Kong is going through and facing right now. Um, and other aspect of Hong Kong in, in terms of societies, um, the, from economic to geopolitical issues, uh, definitely changing from about at least 12 to 13 months that since I was uh, last year. Uh, it has been a challenging time, but nevertheless, Hong Kong is always going to be Hong Kong unless uh, the dynamic had changed drastically for, for the next few months. So this video is made in 2019 September. Yes. So uh, this video, uh, as 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 we speak, is in the month of September, uh, 2019. And Sp specific on what day? Uh, right now today is Monday, Monday, September the 9th, 9, 2019. Yeah. And so by the time the video launch, by on time the, the public would be later than nine. So a few days later. A few days later. Yeah. Correct. So from that on would be different from what you said today. <laughs> Most likely, at uh, once I, you know, um, leave Hong Kong. When did you come anyway? When. When, yes, you came uh, here. I came here, landed August 3rd on a Saturday, and I will be going back. No, you don't have to tell when you go back, but you stay here for a month, more than a month. Mo more than a month yeah. so far, yes. So, so you see a lot about things in Hong Kong, right? Yes, uh, well, it had changed since from last year versus this year. Uh, changed drastically. Um, in what form? In form of the civility the issue with the younger millennial generations uh, that sincere fear for the futures in terms of what to expect in this economy where the pricing of houses is very expensive where they simply cannot afford a place for their own one day. So that's part of the reason why the protest is uh, demonstrating since June and I believe it will continue until those needs are met by the um, younger generations. Uh, in the meantime, I hope that the Hong Kong people will listen to them and the government will open their ears as well to at least listen to what their fears and their desire and their hopes for the future. That's probably one reason they are demonstrating that anger right now, it's not because they don't love Hong Kong or want to destroy the um, city. It's just that they do not know how to process their feelings um, by going through the physical emotion right now. And the police should have a little bit more empathy towards them as well. Um, I think if we approach with less violence, they may come back with less violent as well, but if the police continue to escalate the issue and with more violence, then obviously the younger generation, the protesters will come back with a little bit more violent um, of their own. So we just hope and pray that Hong Kong will come out as what other nations see Hong Kong used to be. But I don't think that things will change because things cannot be stayed the same. Uh, the dynamic is always changing. So Hong Kong will always get change uh, in the future, but as of now, there is some political and geo and economic issue need to be uh, addressed in this um, city. Okay, um, before you came here last year, before that you haven't been to Hong Kong, not even once, right? So last time for you is the first time came to Hong Kong. What what is your feeling before you came to Hong Kong? What do you know about Hong Kong? Well, um, just I, by the TV, by the article. Well, I hear about Hong Kong. Um, I mean, my my grandfather was from China, uh, Shanghai. He, he migrated, obviously, 
to Hong Kong for a while and then went to Vietnam. Um, but um, the story that I heard about that uh, from him when I was young. Um, he came here before? No, um, no. my family said, not me. Okay. So when I decided to uh, make a trip last year for a few months, um, I expected what I have heard in the past. But, but this is good because most people who haven't been to Hong Kong, you can tell what's, what you feel. Well, um, in general, consensus is that if you've never been to Hong Kong before your first time here, you need to really see the whole Hong Kong in terms of the people, the economy, and the political systems, and who is in charge of the system not just come here as seen, you know, I love Hong Kong per se as a vacation. Yes, you as a tourist, you may love Hong Kong, but to truly love Hong Kong, you need to know the whole aspect of what Hong Kong is about. Um, but since, you know, being here last year for a few months and here this time again, I definitely have seen the tremendous changes from the last 12 months. Uh, things have spread very rapidly in terms of, of the, um, the hostility. Last year, it has still some little hostility, but it was not compared to the final straw that uh, broke the uh, camel's back this year because of the extradition bill. And that's really bring out the uh, sentiment of, of the anger from the younger generations. As you can see, most of the protesters, they are in, in terms of younger age group. Yes, you do see some middle-aged, a little bit older senior citizen, but majority of them are millennial age, and they are definitely taking the anger out because they feel that there is no hope no future. and futures in here. That's why most of them want to escape and move out of Hong Kong, but unfortunately they can't. Um, in terms of economic issues, they just simply cannot afford to move from here to other places. So this is their homes and they want to make the best of it. Um, but I would say overall that the Hong Kong is still a very safe city. As you can see, you know, the news, the media portrayed the protester as violence, as a rioters. But if you really look at the whole story and picture, they don't really destroy any businesses except only with the government buildings, government owned properties only, but in terms of private sector, they have not even touched their building or any break in the windows, things like that. Unlike if you were back in the United States, now I would call those or are rioters. Europe, or in Europe. Or in Europe as well, yeah. those are rioters. They don't care, they will burn your car, they will burn the businesses, they will break in, they will steal your personal property. We're here, those protesters, they don't do any of, of those things. I have seen them firsthand myself. So, so we have to categorize them in terms of protesters versus rioters. My sentiment is that being not to the left or to the right, but being as a visitor, as my observations, I'm seen as a simply protesting what issue is there to the heart. Were you on the site during the protest? Or near to the oh, protest? Yes, correct. A um, few, few weekends ago, mm -hmm. when they were in Emerality, mm -hmm. um, I was there and saw a lot of the, um, um, several groups of the um, people wearing black shirt was mm -hmm. going different directions. With the mask. Some wear masks, some were, uh, they, they were getting ready. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, yeah, so, so in terms of the, the protester, they're not, uh, yes, certain small group, they are getting tend to be a little violent, but overall, they're not really in terms of scaring any visitor or, any, or beat up anyone, as the media will portray that um, you have to be careful. But overall, I feel very safe here. I walk out nighttime, 10, 11 o'clock, you know, I take the bus, I take the train, I walk, and there's no issue. I, I saw many story about what you call the riot, a rioter, I call the protester, they even protect the visitor. Correct. Rather than the police, 
they, they even harm the, the tourists Correct. Uh, or the Western people who, who live in Hong Kong. This is the thing that you have to um, really come into conclusions that not just listen to the media because I have seen some of the news and some of the media in terms of which, which um, channel or, um, or source, source that's come source. from. Yep. You have to know that where the source is coming from and they are very biased. I, I will tell you this. Uh, the protesters, believe me, I walked past by them a few weeks ago. They do not hurt you. They will not hurt you. Have you yeah. ever tried to talk to them? Um, no, I have not approached, talked to them directly. Yeah. I'm trying to... Yeah. But again, yeah, I, I feel very safe uh, mm -hmm. with them, really. I think if you talk to them, they would like to share their opinion to you as well. Uh, the good thing is you can speak a little bit in Cantonese, but I would say those people out there, they can communicate with you in English rather than just only the Cantonese. Yeah, because uh, my majority of the younger generation, they do speak English. Yeah. Not necessarily speak too well, but at least part of them are speaking well than I do. Even, even worse than I speak English. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw the news when the uh, foreigner reporters mm -hmm. came with a mic and asked or interview a a protester. They can tell in foreign mm -hmm. English. Yes. Yes. So uh, you haven't talked to them, but uh, as you say, you just pass by. You don't fear of them, rather than you will fear the police coming to your direction. Well, um, Hong Kong police, uh, they do have a tough job, but majority, I feel that they are more um, in the upbeat, they're always on their guard. Um, and sometimes I don't think that who is in control. Um, oh, have you ever heard the rumor that those, not all, at least some of them, are not from Hong Kong? Yes, I have rumored that uh, some of the police is not really a true Hong Kong policeman. They are uh, infiltrated um, from mainland China. And also some of the protesters are being infiltrated by policemen that dress in black as well. Perhaps even start the trouble and escalate it and blame on the protesters. So those things are, are being very, very... Um, new ways of trying to tackle the issue from the protesting point of view is that police is trying many different ways. For example, a few days ago when I was in the MTR, I saw a, um, a older couple dressed very nicely, but they are an undercover policeman. Because I saw one guy was rushing into the train uh, when the door was closed and he was acting very erratically. But, and those couples stopped him asking for his ID and once I saw that, I knew that they were police because they dress like an average citizen, but yet uh, they are everywhere. So they are start to uh, try different means to infiltrate into the uh, um, so-called black shirts right now. Yeah, yeah. So this is the tactics change on both sides. All right. I mentioned that on my YouTube community section. On uh, August 5th, I believe, uh, I wrote a paragraph, or more than a paragraph, or statement, what you call about. I said both sides are going to change the tactics, but my meaning is not only from the uh, protester side, but also from the police side. Yep. And that makes sense from now. Yeah, when I wrote it on the fifth of August, <laughs> uh, maybe some people say, "Oh, you are just make your own story mm -hmm. up," but uh, it it comes true by over the month. We see a lot of tactics is change quite a bit, like uh, from say so many undercover mm -hmm. police, and I see that they also trigger the violence by the police. As KP said, uh, they dress up like a protester. They flow the bombs, the the gasoline bomb. They are not the protester, but find out that most of them might 
might, okay? I emphasize might because there's no evidence yet. They are the police. Well, you see last few days that the street in Central's Causeway Base um, was set on fires, the MTR. Um, yes, that was a little bit extreme, but at the same time, from June until now, um, none of the um, private sector businesses was being destroyed by the protesters because they are not here to, to destroy things. They are here to more or less demonstrate that their, um, that their feeling that their voice is not being heard by their own government. And um, I think this issue can be resolved on both parties, mm -hmm. but somebody needs to reach out with the hand first. Sometimes I think the government have too much pride uh, in one hand that they don't want to reach out to the younger generations. They think that because they're older, they know much better than they do. So I, I think both parties need to per se is that somebody has to give something to get something. But if this don't, I think that it's not just the city names will be tarnished, but the, the, the economic futures of Hong Kong, the, um, the foreign companies will not come in and are willing to pull out. So that's really bring down the economic in terms of a major recession for this one great city that um, so many people love to come here. Um, I should hate to see this city to go down because I do have friends that live here. Yes, um, me. That you, you're one of them. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, I have friends that like to come to Hong Kong and um, yeah, I would love to come back every year, stay three to six months here um, when I can. Um, but again, this issue needs to be taken care of, otherwise it just makes Saturday and Sunday is, is unbearable for tourists and family members want to go out to enjoy that day, right? Where the protestings continue, uh, this is what's going on the 13, 14 weeks uh, of consecutive weeks now. And I don't see that it's going to stop or diminish because there's still four more points or issue that the protesters want or, or some call it demand uh, from the government. So I think both parties just need to sit down. Uh, you can accomplish more, sit down and talk rather than have things escalate because if this continue to escalate, I think I think someone got may get you know hurt really badly. Uh, whether from the police side or from the protester side, we don't want to see that uh, because we are humans, right? And I'm sure the police, they have family member of their own and their family worry about them. Same time, the protesters, they have family as well. When they go on protesting, their friends and family worry about them as well. So both sides need to kind of like sit back, calm down, and, and let's talk. Um, I understand that there's other issues that involve in it, and not just Hong Kong itself, but you know, um, may or may not be from China point of view. But either way, somebody have to take the first step uh, in order for this issue to resolve quickly. What do you suggest for the visitor to come to Hong Kong in upcoming? Uh, any recommendation? Oh, um, what is my recommendation? Recommendation I put on the on my community section. Do you agree or disagree? Well. <laughs> I mean, overall, it's still a safe place right. to come. Um, I, just don't listen to the media so much that they're using the word rioters. It is still a very safe place to come here um, to visit. And some of the people that who lived here, they worry about uh, Hong Kong uh, because of, of, of the uh, tear gas or tear smoke. That's what they worry about. They're not worried about so much as the, the protesters themselves, but it's it just general chemical that they don't want for their children. That's what they're concerned about. So um, if you are contemplating coming to Hong Kong to visit, it really, it just, it's still a safe place, but you just have to make the travel plan and you might take a little bit longer because um, one thing, don't come on weekend, okay? <laughs> because then when the protests come, protests come out, if you want to take off, land or um, in, and out. in and out Hong Kong, I would do it 
on a weekday. Yeah. I will not do it on the weekend. Otherwise, uh, yeah, you're going to be delayed. Uh, certain MTR is not going to work. The bus system is not going to go there. Your um, flight might cancel or delay. So yeah, best thing is if you want to come to Hong Kong, just travel during weekdays, you will be fine. Uh, in my community, I always address that first thing you should uh, call your embassy. Yes, yes. Um, if you yeah, if you able to um, wherever you live, uh, you you're, you're gonna stay with your friend, the contact person. Yeah, you have a page that in your in the, in the um, government website you can input your name and your passport and your location where you gonna stay, your contact information. But that's U.S. only, right? Well, that's U.S. And other country as well. And other country as well. And then uh, if anything changes, they will notify you via email. Uh, yeah, always, once you, you land, always go to your embassy, let them know uh, where you stay. The period you stay. All right. Right, and also asking for the emergency, emergency number, number from your embassy. From your embassy, yeah. correct. Yeah. Uh, they might be asking you why, because you said, for my personal safety, once if I got caught during the weekend, the embassy is not in the office hour, who can I call to? If I got in the trouble, a deep trouble, so I need a number that I can contact to you, the embassy, the the the, the consulate. Yes. Also, let your family member know as well. Mm -hmm. um, your friends, family member, stay in touch with them uh, via social media. Because we heard that a Japanese, a Korean guy, also caught by the police because in the wrong place at the wrong time. Not necessarily they are the protester, but <laughs> they are just a regular person that just walk by and... Uh, oh, if, if you wear the wrong color too, don't uh, try not to wear black or white if you can. Um, because doesn't if you wear... Matter because color doesn't save you. Doesn't more. save you, but, but, but from the police standpoint, if you're an innocent person, if I were to, let's say last night, I was not involved in the protesting. You got to walk and, outside and with black. One, one thing I would address here again, uh, even though I mentioned in my community sector, English doesn't save you. Speaking English would be <laughs> not save your life. <laughs> well, the reason is the police doesn't speak well in English. Secondly, is majority people, or not majority, some people think you are a spy. Uh, the, the good thing you should have asked who can write you in Chinese say I'm a tourist in Chinese rather than uh, nothing just a phone you can call because when you try to reach a person who doesn't speak English that would be save you help you as long as you, your status saying I'm a tourist right the shooting from the uh, the police, they doesn't matter who you are. You look like an ordinary person. Well, doesn't matter. You are oppressed. They're going to shoot you with the tear gas, rubber bullet. Yeah, it's so dangerous. If you look at, see, uh, try to take a picture, a video for what happening when you come across a incident like that, go away. Don't stay. Find a place to hide. That's it. My suggestion. Agree? Well, as long as you're a tourist and you just do your own tourist thing and not get involved, uh, you will be fine, you will be safe. Uh, there are other apps or social media will let you know that certain sites to stay out. There's one good thing about the protesters, they always announce where they're going to be most of the time. So you will stay away from that, those areas. Um, yeah. Well, how they, do they know? Because they don't know what go going on in Mong Kok, Chim Sa Jai, Causeway Bay. Mm -hmm. It's ha ha happen everywhere. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean only place say, oh, I have a rally or I have a protest in, in Central. Doesn't mean Mong Kok is safe. Mm -hmm. So how can you tell the viewers or the visitor? 
Well, the only things I would suggest is talk to the local people. Yeah, yeah you talk to local people at the same time. Uh, you, can, you can pretty much tell also if you start to see certain MTR station, if you see a, lo a lot of police, riot police there, then you know that something potentially could escalate, so you want to stay away from those areas, yep. right? Like the other day, what was a, a Saturday, there was a, at least 200 police riot police officer in uh, IFC is under the ground level um, where the uh, um, air, airport uh, express where you check in your baggage and so forth there were at least 200 riot police there so something was up so that is when you want to get out of there so yeah so so Hong Kong still can be safe you just have to be a little bit extra careful when you travel out uh, make sure that you know your your route in case one you know MTR station is closed you, you have the other backup plan and learn your bus system as well yes uh, as I mentioned the tactics change is one of the protests having places not only say in one place anymore they split out from one to another one they change location within in one hour they move around the city so this is hard to tell the visitor how to find a safe place uh, but again is try to talk to the local people uh, ask them where should I go and not to go yep that's the only suggestion I can tell the tactics changed more unpredictable yes I like the word unpredictable correct and and it will continue I believe until something is going to change I need to change otherwise this will continue whether from the protest point of view or from the government side or from if there is going to be any external um, coming in from the Hong Kong side or not we don't know it just predicated on how far the escalation from the protester point of view how far are they willing to go um, to to have that request met the remaining four items left so because originally it was only one item which was the withdrawal of the extradition bill but unfortunately as time progressed and things being um, taken out of proportions and um, then this more item was requested and on the table and need to be satisfied by the protester point of view before this protesting on the, on the, on the uh, weekly basis is going to stop um, but in the meantime the average citizen in Hong Kong um, they are still living their life on a daily basis. Uh, they still have work to do. Uh, they still have family members to take care of. Um, and from the tourist point of view, yes, there's still many places you're still able to see during the weekdays. Weekend, uh, it may or may not be. It just it depends on where the protesters is going to be at because they are like very nimble. They are like ninja. Uh, they in one what like Dennis said in one spot, then suddenly that they're not there no more, because they have a very good ways of communicating with each other. Mm -hmm. uh, they can be in several locations, uh, as you can see in the news that police you know were trying to um, go search from building to building and never discover where they are. So yes, just so, like like oh, 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 I forgot the word gorilla. Gorilla tactic. How to say it? Gorilla. Gorilla tactic that okay, they yeah. use. Yeah, yeah. That's, it's more that's or less. It's like hit and run, and yeah. and move on to to the next um, site, next area. Yeah. Um, lastly, uh, one one conclusion of mine is saying, what you see Hong Kong now, is far from your country maybe, but doesn't mean it's safe or no reflect or no inference to your country as you think what I'm saying is once Hong Kong got fall down 
if that happened, I mean, economy side, the financial hubs in Hong Kong, if things has changed badly, I would foresee also influence to your country as well. One reason is Hong Kong as a financial hubs, also a hubs for washing your black money. <laughs> <laughs> that is most people know or not knowing but what if Hong Kong is gone doesn't mean no effect to you it's also fact affect your country as well, well at some point if, if, if Hong Kong is no longer Hong Kong I think the expat uh, the foreign country uh, company is going to exit Hong Kong and go somewhere else yep. And they got to do the same thing. The only difference is it's a different locations. The only really one is truly suffer is the people who live here. Uh, it, it, it's going to change the, the, the dynamic of a one of the world mm -hmm. economic place to do business. It's going to be a, a place where people is going to in terms of the one that live here is going to suffer a lot. If, if Hong Kong diminished as a economic powerhouse, right? Yeah. It's not just affecting the Hong Kong people who live here, it will affect a, a small minority group work here as we know OFW. Mm -hmm. The um, overseas foreign workers, mm -hmm. predominantly it is about, I would say 99.9 .9 female. Oh, come in here. the population, let me address, this is really important. There are 300,000 of workers from either Philippines or Indonesia. Correct. And if, if anything happened, even, you know, most of them concerned about the issue here, what's going on in terms of the protesting, but they still feel that this is a better place to earn an, an income because what they earn here is still considerably very meager and low wages but when you convert the Hong Kong dollars back into their own currency their country they still make about somewhere between three times more than what the men earn back home so that's why the, it is very crucial and important to them that they stay here even as we speak the turmoil, turmoil and the uncertainty uh, having a job here or not they still want to be here. So there is a small little group that uh, we must not over um, see it is those um, domestic helper that, that, that is actually working here. Okay, that's another one that is, is going to destroy as well because they are not able to find any other job unless they want to go to the Middle East, right? Uh, going to work in the Middle East is another big issue over there. Uh, it's probably the worst place, in my opinion, to work in the Middle East for the OFW than compared to, yes, Hong Kong is not the greatest for them, but nevertheless, it's better than going over to the Middle East um, to work over there. So they do have very few choices in terms of places where they can go, but that is why majority willing to stay here, even the issue that is facing Hong Kong today. How about those professionals? Expat. Those, those expats, they can go anywhere really because they are a white collar worker, professional, have degrees and they have a lot of um, uh, networking and, and, and um, um, yeah, they can go to Singapore, they can go to Europe, they can go back home, anywhere. I mean, th th that demand is still going to need uh, needed wherever they go. Um, their salary is, is still going to be like still way up here so so yeah they rather stay here but if they have no choice it won't matter they still make money somewhere else so those group I don't really worry about too much the one I'm really concerned about is the, the OFW the low, skill. the low skill low wages worker but yet when we look at them say low skill it's not a mean of uh, to put them down it's just that they don't pay well enough for the kind of work they are doing. So to lose a job here, right, and go somewhere else, perhaps, um, and it's going to affect their incomes and their livelihood back home. So yeah, that's one group that we 
have not really look at or concentrate or think about. So overall picture is that when you look at the protesting here, it's not just about the Hong Kong people. It's a really it's a big broad pictures. Yes, it's going to affect the, the economy of, of not just Hong Kong but other places as well. You know the OFW right, and then you have the Hong Kong people who works there that work in the blue collar worker field. That's what we call it, the service sector right, um, working 10, 12 hours a day, earning minimum wages. It's going to affect them that they may may not have a job. Right? Because what they may now is go towards rent, go towards food, not much, really. I mean, when, when you come to Hong Kong, I will tell you, sh shopping malls are very, very, very unique and it's, it's fabulous. I would say it's better shopping mall than we have at home because I've seen all the mall here. Um, very expensive, a luxury brand, but I will tell you, none of the locals that who live here will, will go there or shop there. Those brands strictly for foreigners and for tourists middle class. or high middle class that can no. afford. High middle class. Okay, not, high, middle not class. middle class, but high middle class that own an expensive flat and a car. Those are the ones that really, they, they culture, culturize into Western type of living. Under the property line, recently we have a study showing that Hong Kong population is 7.5 million and 1.35 million is poor under the property line. So might be not telling the truth, but just give you some sense of not people in Hong Kong are rich. Uh, I would say middle class average only 2 million or less <laughs> and rest of them are they rich no no they are not either middle class or lower class but they just it's the middle class now <laughs> so they are not rich enough to buy luxury product living so well they work so hard uh, there is one we were not my viewer uh, I mean I at the Facebook arguing with me that a I believe it's a Chinese guy uh, saying, oh, you Hong Kong people not working too hard uh, so that you complain this, you complain that. I found out recently a statistic again showing people work over 50 hours a week. Well, 50 hours is not the extreme cases. Even 60 hours a week average should be the the reality a lot of people have to work overtime over hours a day to maintain a living it's not a question of that, that gentleman is in my opinion incorrect it's not a question of when you look at each sector blue collar worker for example it's not the question how hard they work because even if they work 15 hours a day mm -hmm. they still go make the same amount per hour each hour it's not like what well, you are entrepreneur, right? The mm -hmm. harder you work, the more ideas that you have, you're gonna generate that profit. So you are in the blue collar worker, you only have a set wages or hourly pay. Mm -hmm. Okay, 12 hours a day, you're gonna make this much. 15 hours a day, you're gonna make this much, right? But you stand here living is this much. How yep. can your wages yep. is going to catch up? Yep. The, the, the wages the, um, is not going up. Living as fast as, as this, uh, um, um, cost of living in Hong Kong. So, so when you you cannot compare that blue collar worker versus a different type of classification okay. of worker. Uh, I remember last year you do have a experience that uh, you looking for an apartment or sub flat apartment in Hong Kong, right? Mm -hmm. You know the price, right? Mm -hmm. What what that average uh, uh, average you found most? Well, a monthly. Um, yeah, a it's monthly. Not reasonable anyway. It's not reasonable. <laughs> the, the monthly rent for an um, three hundred square feet. You, I'm very generous when I say three hundred square feet um, yep. apartment size. Yep. Um, you are paying probably like about fifteen thousand minimum yep. um, a month. So, if a blue collar worker working twelve to 
14 hours a day, let's say they make $15,000 a month, they cannot afford that. Right. Unless you are 30000 at least. You have to make at least thirty to 40000 minimum a month, mm -hmm. Hong Kong dollar, just to rent one of those 300 square foot feet. And, uh, and again, is the population in Hong Kong majority are living not in Kowloon or in island here. Most, I would say, five million people live in new territories. So they have to come all the way to Kowloon or Hong Kong Island to work every day, traveling. You know, costs and time. As KP notes that when we were in Twin Moon, right? Yes, the the. Uh the, the time itself is that you probably spend back and forth good two, two, two and a half to three hours, just back and forth um, each day to commuting through either bus or MTR. And also the, um, the traveling expense itself, um, it's got probably about good $55, $60 a day um, on, on traveling. So the cost is not cost effective if you live in a new territory way up there and come work in the Kowloon right. side. So that's why most of them don't really, they, they rather stay over there and, and, and get paid a little bit less than compare wasting the two, three hour time traveling. People ask why you go, have to go all the way to new territories. Why don't you find a place in Kowloon or Island? Well, put this way, if you live in island here uh, you may be spend 20,000 10,000 to 20,000 monthly but you can save 50% if you live in right. new territories but it doesn't save your time of travel and your cost of travel well but cheaper than you living in Hong Kong Island yes. or in Kowloon side so that's the reason that people have to move all the way to new territories. Uh, living is so difficult in Hong Kong as a viewer asked me long, long time ago. He asked, can I be in Hong Kong as a air conditioning technician? <laughs> as living? Well, I did not reply any. Yeah, I don't know how to answer. Well, <laughs> as you can see, if you see Hong Kong, you will see that the high-rise building and everyone have a unit, right, or air conditioning yeah. unit. Um, the question is that, does that unit need to be repaired on a daily basis? Um, I don't know, it, it's hard. the demand is there, but whether making a, a living as a air conditioning te technician, I don't know. Because I have a friend that in um, Fortan, mm -hmm. last year he need to have his AC mm -hmm. uh, a unit. ton mm -hmm. unit to service, mm -hmm. and he have to call all the way from the taxi ride where he is to that place is like two hundred dollar taxi ride. Mm -hmm. Okay, just taxi ride. Then the fact that they cannot tell him on the phone how much he charge, he has to bring the unit over there so they can look at it. <laughs> Before they can tell him how much he charged, right? Uh -huh. So he said, forget it. By the time I go there and back, that's over $400 just on the cab fare. Mm -hmm. Then the fact that he cannot tell me how much, what happened if he says $700? Yeah. Then I will be down. All that meant. So what he did was that he Googled it on YouTube how to fix it. So he ordered a part, he fixed it himself. It cost him like 100 some bucks. <laughs> <laughs> so, so your question is that, is it worth for you to be an aircon technician here? I don't know. Wow. Put this way, because I know people think like Hong Kong is a paradise. Uh, kind of like, oh, it is so good being in Hong Kong. I love Hong Kong. Oh, I, once again, don't bullshit to me how you love Hong Kong. But anyway, I know so many misunderstanding or misconception is Hong Kong is like before 70, 1997. No, it's changed. Hong Kong has been changed a lot. Even though KP has in Hong Kong for last year and this year, he can tell the differences. Uh, yeah, Hong Kong is not a paradise for you. Hong Kong, <laughs> when you come here for seven days, ten yeah. days, twelve days, you yeah. can't. You don't really know the true Hong Kong. 
yep. because you too busy sightseeing, um, eating um, different type of foods. But if you stay here for three months and go out every day, talk to the local and hear things, see things, you start to see the changes and, and what the true Hong Kong people that live here experience on a day-to-day -day, um, lives. But, but as a tourist, um, yeah, sometimes you know, when we go places, you use the word, I love this, I love Hong Kong. But in reality, is that you, we have not really experienced Hong Kong um, as a tourist and know the true meaning of I love Hong Kong. Yeah, I know some of the viewers will right now criticize me. Oh, if you don't like Hong Kong, why don't you go away? <laughs> don't live in Hong Kong. Well, well this is my home. Believe me, um, a lot of Hong Kong people like to stay, but a lot also like to go. But but where to go? Where to go? Number one, and 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 how are they going to assimilate a new environment? And also, it takes money to move to to new places. So that that's that's part of the reason why they are not going. Um, so the question is that why Dennis not leaving Hong Kong is because one he's a Hong Konger he would rather stay here, but but well, secondly I'm in poor I'm so poor not to go <laughs> anywhere. But that's the fact. If he's able to do, I'm sure like everyone else, right? Why you want to leave your country and go somewhere else? Uh, why you, you you cannot go? It's maybe one of the reason is that because well economic. Hong Kong can be paradise if, only if, we can to choose the right person to be our CE, chief executive. But anyway, we cannot have our own government. So that's why Hong Kong is not a paradise unless universal suffrage that we can right. choose our own person, right person. Well, I heard many people have said that Hong Kong is one country, two systems. What do you see? Is it 1.9, 1.8? my opinion, it's not really... Yes, it is one country, but it's, it's not really two systems. It's really one system. Because, oh, not, not one system, 1.5. Well, to <laughs> me, it's one system. It's only the higher up echelon will let it be that way. Um, as long as it's being controlled by the authoritarian party, um, it will never be two systems. Uh, whether we are talking about today or, or 2047, uh, eventually you know, China will take over Hong Kong. But if we are speaking today, that's why one of the reasons protesting is that the point number five is that the younger generation want their own voice in the political system. They want to able to be uh, sit in the government seat as well to dictate their future. Because the current system, what they have right now, the current government will not let them have a voice in the system. That is why they are fighting for their rights. Uh, just like any other nations, uh, for example, United States. If what happened is that back in 1776, of, uh, uh, if, if the militia um, did not want to join in and fight against the British, right? Then how would there will be two separate countries? Because of their fought for tyranny and struggle and want to be on their own nations, that is why United States is the way they are today, um, away from the motherland, Britain. But the younger generation, they want to have a voice in Hong Kong because they feel that Hong Kong is their city, their, their country. It may not be a separate country, but nevertheless in their mind, they think that it is separate from, from China. And from the point of view, from some of the Chinese people that they think that Hong Kong is one. So it's yeah, the, it's the country. Yeah, so you have two point of view. Yep. Um, if you live in China, obviously you will hear the, the different point of view. You are not going to see the whole pictures. Right. Uh, but when you live outside of China, you will see everything, the good and the bad. It's nothing being hidden from you. It's nothing being distorted. It's nothing being um, um, telling you that what this is. What um, so? If the people live in China, if you 
come to Hong Kong, you have ears, open your ears and listen, you have eyes, see for yourself. Let your mind and your heart dictate, determine what you have seen in here, rather than having someone tell you what it should be. Right. Um, lastly, really lastly, before the battery is run off, uh, I want to address one thing in here is say, people will ask, uh, what if Hong Kong without China? Uh, I would say Hong Kong sh not without China, no problem. But China cannot without Hong Kong is the problem because they getting the money from Hong Kong through the stock exchange system. Uh, I heard that uh, saying 70% to 80% of the capital in China is through this system from Hong Kong. Uh, since 2001, when they signed the WTO, WTO, yeah, correct. when they get the money in and out from Hong Kong. Well, because it's so-called autonomy, right? Uh, they are being treated differently from the yeah. Western um, yeah. world. Uh, that that's makes so many people don't understand. Say, oh, Hong Kong is part of China. Yes, but we have different system. If we are really part of China, then it would be a problem without our system. Well, that's why United States the Senate is is right now uh, trying to le legislate. Uh, it's going to be signed by tomorrow, I guess. No, when they come back, right? Uh, I think I'm pretty sure that they will sign. They'll uh, the the Republican the and the Democrat. They were going to agree upon that. Uh -huh, uh -huh. They're going to look at Hong Kong every single year, right? In terms of uh, human suffrage. Well, and what was that act called? Hong Kong Policy Act. No, Hong um, Kong. I think Hong Kong Human Suffering. Um, policy something act. of that nature yeah. is that. If that pass, mm -hmm. that means Hong Kong is going to face a issue that going to be um, reviewed by 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 the, the US. Correct. US. That whether uh, it's going to be sanctions or yeah. not is due because of the human suffering in here. Mm -hmm. So that will be interesting to see that bill whether it's going to pass shortly. Yeah. But I think that it will. Yeah. By the time you uh, go back. Um, yeah, uh, it's I think that it is uh, uh, ready, um, um, but if uh, that is the case, then I think that if human suffrage in Hong Kong continue, then can you imagine Hong Kong being sanctioned? That will, that will be the last thing that we want to see. Okay, so let's end up here because I think my battery is, have to say goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, talk to you soon. Okay.